The following episode contains adult content and violence. Listener discretion is advised. We're back. Please stick around after the episode for a very special announcement about our upcoming shows. Legacy, a Star Wars audio drama created and produced by Crystal Storm and Hannah Cardiac. Episode 17. The image of Elijah is what brought me awake. When my eyes snapped open, though, it was not his face I saw, but Reed's. <sighs> Welcome back. I could hear the relief in her tone. I shared her sentiment. It was a great weight off my heart she was all right. Quickly, the events that had transpired before my injury robbed me of consciousness came flooding back. I sat up with a slight wince. My injury was still sore, but it was nothing a few more colto injections wouldn't heal. I got up from the med bay bed I was currently in. Update? The same dead assholes we found on your ship attacked Lancoro at a cantina on Coruscant. They killed Mako, and they took him. Vets here. Apparently, the same happened on Van Cito's ship. This news did not bode well for my temperament. I felt my anger quickly surge, covering a mother's fear. With great control, I tempered it back. Veltana? We don't know. I haven't been able to get shit from Draman Koss. I nodded. That was information I could gather after I'd spoken to Ved about what had transpired on Trevancito's ship. I slid on my robe. Elijah? Nadia sent me a message that he went to meet with Gade and Co. That was about 12 hours ago, though. She hasn't heard from him since. The Voss? Do we know why he contacted Elijah? Nadia claims he didn't say. Before we could discuss anything further, Vet appeared in Medbay. She looked like she'd just come from battle, and I could feel the fear and worry that emanated from her. We've got an incoming transmission. I quickly followed her. I noticed that both Jason and Pierce were in cultal tanks, but I would inquire about their status later. Read behind me. I followed Vet to the main hold of my ship and stood in front of my hollow terminal. I quickly pressed the button to receive the incoming transmission. I wish I hadn't. The first thing that played was a recorded video, and my fury mounted with each passing second I watched Elijah fight Zarin. A violent hiss parted my lips, my hands bunching into fists at my sides as I watched him die. The video stopped, and Zarin's image appeared. Your children have shared Elijah's fate. I will not make you watch their deaths. I couldn't feel them. I couldn't feel them. There was nothing where they should be which meant she was telling the truth. The next sound that left my mouth was one of pure anguish. I didn't even know I'd fallen to one knee. Reed moved in front of me, shielding me. Why, Zarin? The Sith Empire is a disease on the galaxy. Your oppression cannot be continued. Who the frack do you think you're talking to? Since when are we the Sith Empire? You share its ideals. You have no love of law, democracy, or peace. Saren killed them. After everything I'd done to atone for my sins, after sharing the battlefield with me against the Emperor, she betrayed me as well as any Sith. Better, in fact. And my children. My children. Those precious precious lives had suffered the consequence. As the reality of it all came crashing down on me, my heart simply shattered. I have never felt the dark side of the force as strongly as I did in those moments. My agony channeled so very quickly into hate. I surged to my feet, violently shoving Reed out of my way and slammed my hands on the terminal. As you wish, I will burn every city, every planet that swears allegiance to your Republic. And you, Jedi, will suffer greatly before I allow you to die. Then you leave me no choice. No. You had a choice. 
Now every second you live is a gift from me. I killed the connection with the lightning that suddenly burst from my fingers. Never had I been able to conjure its power before, but I felt so much different now. Reed backed up a step, not scared, shocked. Larissa. Don't. Larissa. She came closer to me and I held out my hand to stop her, except she wasn't afraid of me, even though maybe now she should be. Regardless, she wrapped her arms around me tightly, and for just a second, I sunk into her. I let her hold my weight as whatever was left of the Jedi inside of me died. There was no trace of weakness in my tone when I said, Enough. Reed pulled away, nodded once at me. I could feel her pain. She'd love my children as I did, and now she was my only blood family. All that I had left. And I realized with a cold bitterness that if I'd simply listened to her in the beginning, if I'd given up my foolish quest to earn back the affection of a Jedi, Elijah, my children, maybe even Quinn, none of them would be dead. Everything I'd strive for had been for nothing. Zarin would never see me as anything but a Sith. I'd embraced the dark side and yet I'd still fought it. No more. It was time I became what I truly was. Reed deserved to know I was worthy to lead what was left of my family, and my children would have vengeance. I whirled to lock my gaze on Vet. If you are not prepared to serve a Sith Lord, get off my ship! I could feel Vet's volatile emotions. She was by turns devastated and furious. She took a step forward, meeting my gaze evenly. I loved him. He knew, but... He deserved to hear it from me. Once I'd shielded Vet from the darker nature of revenge. Now I wanted her to embrace it. Stand with me. We will avenge him together. I won't let her get away with this. I know you won't. Vet stepped next to me, ready. I was pleased. Reed, find Gaden Co. I want to know what he told Elijah. Vet, take us to Droman Kaz. It is time the Wrath took her rightful place as head of the Empire. Whenever a warrior decides to do something, he must go all the way, but he must take responsibility for what he does. No matter what he does, he must first know why he is doing it, and then he must proceed with his actions without having doubts or remorse about them. Carlos Castaneda. Chapter 52. Anything can be made a prison. Have you ever been a prisoner inside your own mind? It is a nightmare that cannot be imagined. I heard myself speak those words to Elijah. I felt myself fight him, but I could do nothing to stop it. Something else sat inside me, controlling me with a power greater than my partnership with the light side of the Force. Me, a former Jedi Guardian. And yet this thing was more powerful than my connection to the light side of the Force. I screamed. I fought. But I was helpless to prevent myself from killing him. Elijah... Oh, no. The only positive thing from that encounter, if I could even call it that, was that somehow he had known. He'd let my nephews and niece go. Prevented me from doing to them what I had done to him. And if I made it out of this, I would always owe him a debt for that. I would damn sure try. If nothing else, I owed it to Larissa and Elijah. I prayed that he'd told Larissa that she was on her way to rescue them and to stop this insanity. Stop me if necessary. But as I watched myself stand in front of that hollow terminal and tell her those lies, 
accuse her of being nothing more than a Sith. My hopes were crushed. I could only imagine what I'd just done to her. It was no wonder the dark side was so tempting because I was so utterly enraged that for moments I forgot to pay attention. Locked away in the cage of my mind, I silently repeated the Jedi mantra, letting it calm me. Larissa terminated the connection between us and left me speaking to the boss that had done this to me. They've gotten away. No matter. They will not leave Voss. We will find them. Will you kill them? Yes. You have your orders, Master Jedi. Now go and lead your Republic into war. Without argument, I felt myself walking away. One of the Voss that had been in the room during their mind control ritual followed me. For what purpose, I wasn't sure. Was he keeping whatever spell they put over me in place? When I left Voss, would I be able to find a way to break free of his control? Once more, the faint stirrings of hope reappeared. I would damn sure try. When we broke free of the cavern, we didn't meet daylight. That darkness. Not because it was nighttime. Unfortunately, it had been here before. We were on Voss. We were in the Nightmare Lands. What the frack are we doing on Voss? Rancido all but roared, his breath heavy from carrying Lancoro's weight. Lan was a big guy, but I wasn't worried Rancido would tire. If he did get low on energy, he could just channel the dark side. At least I hope he could. I still couldn't feel Mother, but I didn't think she was dead. No, not after seeing Dad. Sadness crashed into me as we sprinted through the forest of Calio leading the way. Never mind that we were probably being chased by the Voss, but the Nightmare Lands lived up to its name and then some. It was a dark, twisted forest, and randomly you'd stumble across piles of bones, courtesy of rabid packs of crisp fangs, or even worse, the Rentius Nashers. And if the wildlife didn't kill you, the longer you stayed, the more lucky it became you'd go mad. Even as we ran, I could hear the whispers and ramblings of beings made insane by the forest. The tormented screams carried on from that still breeze. Where are we going, Calio? Gaiden Co. shuttle is just ahead in the meadow. Gaiden Co. The name was only vaguely familiar to me. I knew he was a Voss, but that was it. For now, I held back my questions. My instincts were better used making sure we got to our destination. We didn't. We'd barely made it to the edge of the forest when Calio's holocom rang. Muttering a foul curse, she scared to a halt. We all pressed our backs against each other, giving us a 360 view of our surroundings while Calio answered it. <sighs> what? They found me. Don't come here, you'll be captured. He didn't finish, and we all knew why. We could hear the explosion and see the smoke rising high above the gnarled black tree branches. Shit, that was our ride. We need to find some cover. <sighs> this way. I didn't like the idea of staying in the forest, but at the moment, we need to regroup and find out what the frack is going on. A deep cliff ran through the forest of the Nightmare Lands. We managed to scale partly down it onto a plateau that barely had enough room for all four of us. But it was out of sight from whoever might be pursuing us, and the wildlife wouldn't climb down here just to eat us. Calio brought a med pack with her. I should explain I gave Lankuro a much needed dose of Kalto. Callio explained that after I'd gone missing from the IA headquarters, she tried to contact Mom but hadn't gotten through. Father answered and Callio met up with him and Gainco, mostly because Callio had a connection to the Voss spaceport that let them through the blockade unseen. At least, so they thought. Callio gave us the same update Gainco had given Father. The whole thing was nuts. After being in Imperial Intelligence, I wondered why anything surprised me anymore. The Republican Empire had officially gone to war, and the Voss had kicked both sides out, effective immediately. Anyone that hadn't left by now was being executed without mercy. I can't say I particularly care for what the Empire and Republic do to each other, but killing the Force is out of the question. Why didn't Dad contact Mom when he found out? Gaiden Co. wasn't sure if the Voss had done the same thing to her as they did to your aunt. So, we held off and decided to come rescue you all first. 
That made sense. Shit. I hope they haven't done anything like this to Mom. I'll read. We have to get a message to her. Unless the Voss have gotten to her, too. <laughs> and get off this rock. Maybe not. If the objective is to pit Empire and Republic against each other, the only players need to directly manipulate are Mom and Zarin. Aunt Reed will follow Mom. Agreed, Agent. So, how do we get a message to her? The Gormak. They don't exactly like us, either. I got a call for a bounty. There's a new leader, some guy named Racklin, that's mounted an offensive against the Voss. Imperials put a bounty on him to help the Voss out. An enemy of my enemy is my friend. Do you know where this camp is, Lancor? Get me out of this fracking forest and I can take us there. Calio, my wife, Mako, we were attacked in a cantina on Coruscant. Um, word is she didn't make it. Lancoro buried his face in his big hand, hiding his pain. His shoulders shook, but other than that, he didn't make a sound. Didn't have to, though. I could feel his anguish. My brows pinched together, and I felt utterly helpless, because I just didn't know how to console him. If there was even a way to console someone through that kind of pain. Francita laid a hand on Lan's arm, whispering something to him. I bit my lower lip. I left someone behind, too, and I had no idea if she made it through the explosion or the attack. It all happened so fast. I refused to think about it, though. I had to stay in agent mode. We had a mission, and everything beyond that circle was irrelevant. Lan, we need to move. He didn't do anything for about five seconds. Then, I heard him suck in a watery breath. When he dropped his hand, he looked as furious as any Sith. Give me another shot of Colto, a blaster, and let's go. Chapter 53, A New War During the trip to Droman Kass, I'd not allowed my grief any purchase. It was wrapped up in the rage that seethed quietly inside of me. A power that surged through my blood, licking its lips in impatient anticipation for the moment I would set it free. When we arrived at the spaceport, I was met by a man in an imperial uniform. Emperor Jadis requires that all arrivals- Emperor Jadis. Yes, my lord. Behind me, Vet and my droid army made themselves known. I canted my head at the stupid little worm. Without lifting my hand, I used the dark side to constrict the airflow around his throat, ensuring he would not interrupt me while I spoke. The Imperial began to choke, clutching at his neck. Darth Jadis does not control the Empire. I do. An error I will set right immediately. You will not inform him of my arrival, and if you do, I will slice you to pieces and feed you to your family. You have children, too. Perhaps I'll kill them anyway. Suffering breeds character, and I find yours lacking. I released him and marched past him without another word. Vet was at my side, and I was silently proud of her. The old vet would have been appalled at what I just said. Now that she'd opened up to the spirit of vengeance, it wasn't hard for me to let the dark side wrap around her like a protective cocoon that she willingly embraced. It transformed pain into something more. Gave it purpose. It was a short journey from the spaceport into Ka City. Before, the Mandalorian Enclave, the Citadel, and Imperial Intelligence Headquarters had stood proudly. Three tall beacons that spoke of the might and determination of the Sith. The Citadel was no more. The Enclave and Intelligence Building show signs of damage, smoke rising from towers, sections missing. I let that too fuel my rage as I walked into the Intelligence Building. Two guards attempted to stop me. I didn't kill them. I walked past them. But I heard their cries as well. Inside the building, I marched straight into the Central Command Room. Veltana had worked here, often. The heart I no longer wish to acknowledge constricted painfully at the thought. I sucked my grief into my hate and I centered my gaze on Darth Jadis. 
He stood in front of a hollow terminal, his hands behind his back, his face hidden behind a helmet. I was well aware of his machinations. He'd unknowingly accepted my daughter into his ranks, and she'd reported every move he made to me. Jadis, like most of the full members of the Dark Council, had one beautiful weakness. Arrogance, and a powerful god complex that made him think he was invincible. I eagerly anticipated showing him otherwise. The room had been a noisy hum of activity. As he slowly turned to face me, the area went quiet. I could hear the amusement in his tone as he spoke. Ah, the fallen one. You will surrender control of your troops and this organization to me. I now lead the Empire. <laughs> you did well killing our apathetic Emperor. But in doing so, my power is now second to none. Yet, you are worthy of a place in my Empire. Join me and- I rolled my eye. I had no patience for his idiotic words. I extended my hand and lightning flew from my fingertips. He did the same and our power collided. It forced him back a step. I didn't budge. My hatred was so much more powerful than his now. Nothing was blacker than the heart of a mother who had lost her children in one fatal, treacherous blow. For seconds, the display didn't stop. The power of our lightning collided, arced from our streams and bounced off the ceiling, the floor, zapping terminals, and occasionally some poor fool got caught in the wild arcs, and I could hear those screams in the second before they evaporated. We both broke it off. He did it because he couldn't hold it. I did it because I wanted to kill him another way. What is this? I won't repeat myself. With a growl, this time he tried to use the force to knock me back a step. I held up my palm, catching the energy, and with a flick of my wrist, I hurled it back to him. It smacked him square in the chest and sent him flying on top of the hollow terminal. A sound of pure rage exploded from him as he stumbled to his feet and withdrew his lightsaber. I used the force to smack it from his hand as if he were a mere acolyte, mocking him. Enraged that I was making a fool out of him, he surged at me like a warrior, bare-fisted and disappeared in a wisp of black smoke. It was his command of the dark side that allowed him to do this, and it was mine that let me see him. I watched him come towards me, and no sooner did he blink into existence than I mimicked his stupid parlor trick. When I reappeared behind him, my extended lightsaber was in my hand, and I took off his head in one clean swipe. You were not worthy to see my eyes as you died. I calmly sheathed my saber. His head rolled across the floor as his body crumpled. The room was still silent. I could feel the fear and I reveled in it. I stepped over his dead body and walked up to the hollow terminal he'd stood in front of. Report. For the first few seconds, nothing happened. I was patient. I expected as much. Finally, a woman I knew because of Tana's reports to be known as Watcher 2 stepped forward. My lord, I have much to report, but if I may, Moff Daklin, she was taken. She's dead, Watcher 2. I heard her gasp, and then I felt grief. A great deal of it. Slowly, I turned my head to meet the anguished expression on this woman's face. You were close to my daughter. Very, my lord. I canted my head. She'd loved Veltana. Veltana had told me nothing of this. I wondered why. Perhaps we'd just been too busy killing the Emperor. I wouldn't have cared about her choices so long as her mate was worthy and she was happy. I'd likely have liked her choice better than Lancoro's. Oh, my children. My dead children. I hid my clenched fists inside my robe. You will help me avenge her. Report. We had much to destroy, and I had a Jedi to find and make suffer. Where is it? I lost it. <laughs> Wait, hang on. What the fuck? I got it. I got it. All right, babe, come here. Come here. Okay, you ready? Hey, Legacy fans, I'm Crystal. I was supposed to say... You're Hannah. Oh, okay. I'm Hannah. Uh, and very quickly, we wanted to tell you that today we are officially starting the Tales of the Forgotten Network. 
uh, myself and my fiance Hannah Hi. and two <laughs> and two other amazing women are going to be bringing you fantastic audio dramas just like Legacy over a range of genres. Tonight, Tuesday, August 16th, during the live listen party on Crystal's Twitch channel, link down below in the description, we'll be giving you a sneak peek of our upcoming horror audio drama, Don't Look. Yeah! We want to raise the production bar, so stay tuned for more important announcements and how you can support us to get more amazing stories just like Legacy. I really hope to chat with you all tonight on Twitch. We have fun. It's going to be so fun. So fun. See you then. Okay, goodbye. Bye. I hope you've enjoyed listening to Legacy. Please remember to subscribe, drop us a review, and share this story with your friends. I also encourage you to come hang out with us. We've got a Discord server and soon we'll have a Facebook group. To join the Discord, click the link down in the description or go to dsc.gg backslash Crystal's Imagination. You can also join us Tuesday evening, 7 Eastern, 6 Central for the Legacy After Show, where I talk with the cast about the episodes and related topics. We do those on Twitch, twitch.tv backslash Crystal's Imagination, or just click the link down in the description. Episode 17 features voice performances by Crystal Storm, Tara, Bun Barian, Jake Riker, Hannah Cardiac, Alejandro Paz, Lindsey Gray, Nick Gunning, Bander, Hesulen, Invader, and Harvey Barker. Sound work done by Hannah Cardiac and Crystal Storm. To view the full cast list, get your PDF copy of Legacy, and learn more about Crystal's sci-fi novels and other upcoming fiction podcasts, go to crystalsimagination.com. Legacy's theme song is composed by Daniel Cherlitza, titled Star Wars Dark Side Themes Reimagined. Additional amazing music tracks contributed to this episode, so please read the description for full credits and links to each track. Legacy is a work of fan fiction created inside the Star Wars The Old Republic universe. It is written, directed, and produced by Crystal Storm. The Daklin family are original characters created by Crystal. A big thank you to BioWare, LucasArts, and Disney for providing such a rich world to create it. Zaren, why? The Sith Empire is a disease on the galaxy. Your oppression cannot be continued. Okay, firstly, who the frack do you think you're talking to? And secondly, since when are we the Sith Empire? I mean, I'm looking around, looking around, and I just, I don't get it. Why, Zarin? What's wrong with you?